What's going on, everybody? We're back again. My name is Pastor Otis Lockett Jr. And we just finished the dynamic service. The topic was running through the resistance. You know, the Bible says that we are empowered to run through troops. There are some things in life that you can't get around. You can't get above. You just have to go through. But I'm so grateful that you don't have to go through alone. I want to encourage you again to connect with us. Why don't you subscribe? Why don't you like? Why don't you share? Why don't you comment? We are beginning a relationship that I think will bless you and bless me in the days to come because I believe that relationships should be mutual. I want to encourage you to enjoy your family, stay connected, even in this COVID season, stay safe. I believe God's hand is on your life. And I believe 2024 has some great things in store for us, I believe it's going to be a season of elevation and even a season of restoration. So stay tuned, stay in touch, and I'll see you really soon. Let's go to the Word of God. Y'all ready? Good, good. I'm going to cut through the field. It reads in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 30 through 31. It reads, For by thee, I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. I want to take a few moments to talk from the subject title, Running Through the Resistance. Running Through the resistance, running through the resistance. As we understand resistance, resistance is God's means of helping us and assisting us in acquiring strength, stamina, or endurance, which are all keys of maturity. And the reason the stage is set up like this on today it's because some of you in the new year, you made a vow that this is the year everything would change for you. That old things would be made new. And so you found yourself in a gymnasium, on a treadmill, on the elliptical. But there is no gymnasium if there isn't any resistance. In fact, what good would it be for you to wear your new joggers, your new sneakers, to the gym, and just sit on the bench? No transformation would take place in your life. But it's only when you find yourself on a machine that offers resistance, that you begin to see improvement in your life. It's when things get hard that things get better. And so many of you are intimidated by what's on the pulpit on today. It brings back bad memories. And you would rather just close your eyes and avoid the resistance. But you never reach your potential if you're always dodging resistance. You'll never develop in life if you always are dodging resistance. I, I want to remind some of you that there are some battles in life that you can't escape. There are some battles in life that you cannot avoid. And this is why David reminds us that sometimes we're going to have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death because there's not an alternative to walk around it. And so it's important that we be committed to walking through what seems to be a battle when David mentions troops. He's assuming that you understand that you're in warfare. 
And I believe one of the things the church has forgotten is that we are in an army. That yes, we have a great mission, but yet there is still great opposition. And we have to anticipate the opposition. In fact, we have to prepare for the opposition. But because we don't teach you opposition is coming, you're surprised when it shows up. But resistance will come. In fact, Jesus warns us that resistance will come. And so there are some battles that you're going to have to go through because you can't go around. There are some red seas in life that you can't walk around, but you have to go through And so I think one of the things that would benefit all of us is if we learn how to go through. Yeah, how to go through. And so we have to learn, as David learned, how to run through the resistance. Yeah, you have to learn how to run through the resistance. I don't know if you grew up like me. But in the old days, yeah, yeah, in the old days, I've lived long enough to say in the old days. You know, young people played outside in the old days. Before we had all of these systems in our homes. We had to go play outside. We would go to school and look forward to recess. I know we don't look forward to recess any longer because we have our tablets. We have our electronics. But there was a time where recess was the highlight of your day. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. Recess is when you have to, had an opportunity to have a conversation with someone Recess is when you got to show how athletic you were. Recess is when you got to release all that extra energy that you felt on the inside for the entire school day. Recess. And, and, and I like games. Anybody like kickball? Where are my kickball saints at? You, you like kickball and recess. And then they had the jungle gym. That's when you could hang and flip Doing recess. But one of my favorite games in recess was Red Rover. I told you in the old days, some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Red who? Red Rover. Red Rover. Red Rover. Come over. Red Rover. Some of you have to reach back a little further than others, but Red Rover is a game that I enjoy. And I believe Red Rover can be paralleled and compared and juxtaposed to what David is discussing in this particular text. Because the objective many times It's the same. And so the thing I love about Red Rover is Red Red Rover was a game of resistance. But you only felt the resistance, I'm going to give you point one, when you called. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to deal with resistance until you call. Some of you already stated it. Red Rover. Red Rover, come over, Red Rover. And the objective is they pick one person to come over. Now, now you can't move unless you're called. And the reason some of us are dealing with some resistance is not because God has rejected us. It's because God has called us. 
And God has chosen you. In fact, it should be proof and confirmation that you're headed in the right direction when you're dealing with resistance. Because resistance is evidence that you're becoming something that you've never been before. Understand this. It was Peter and the disciples. They were going to the other side. Jesus had instructed them to go to the other side. But then a storm breaks out. And Jesus calls Peter out of the boat. While Peter is coming out of the boat, he sees wind. And watch this. He begins to fall because of the call. It wasn't until he responded to the voice of Jesus that he began to see the resistance. That's some of your testimonies that things were going well until you received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And then it seemed like all hell broke out on you. But I came here to tell you that that is just the cost of being called. Red Rover, Red Rover, come over, Red Rover. It's, it's because God called you um, that you're being resisted. Because I want you to know that there are two teams at stake. There's two kingdoms at stake. And so there's a kingdom that's trying to oppose you. You know you're running in the right direction, Kansas City, when Miami tries to tackle you. Because it's the opposition that's proof you're running in the, set, in the right direction. Now, when teammates are trying to tackle you, that means you're running in the wrong direction. But the proof I'm walking in the right direction is the friction I have to deal with by heading there. This is why you have to celebrate the fact that something is opposing you. It must mean that something is behind that devil you're facing because big devils don't guard small rewards. I came to preach to somebody on the day. This is why the enemy is trying to get you to turn around because of everything you have to face because he knows you're on the right path. It wasn't until you said, I'm going to live holy, that everything broke out on you. It wasn't until you said, this year is going to be different than 2023. I played church in 2023, but in 2024, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to be committed like I've never been committed before. And you felt the resistance. Let me talk to all the people that's fasting. It wasn't until you said you're going to turn over your plate. That people start giving you coupons, inviting you out to dinner, inviting you out to lunch. It wasn't until you decided to turn over your plate that Harris Teeter started having sales because they know that you have made a decision for the Lord and hell doesn't like it. So when you're called, you can expect resistance. Red Rover, Red Rover, come over. And some of you, the reason life is not easy nor fair is because of the call that's on your life. They could have called anybody's name on the Red Rover team, but they called you. Yeah. Yeah. Satan was going to and fro looking for somebody who he could try. And, and, and sometimes Satan will call you and sometimes God will volunteer you. He says, have you considered my servant? Job. And yet Job had to deal with some resistance. The Bible says he loses his family. He loses his livestock. He loses just about everything except for his wife who was talking crazy and his life. Because every now and then, you're going to have to deal with resistance when you're called. And so David is dealing with some resistance because he's called. David has dealt with resistance his whole entire life. His father resisted him. That's why he was out in the field when his brothers were in the house with the oil. But the oil couldn't move until David came in because God gives you the power to overcome resistance. And sometimes you can see how much anointing is on your life by the resistance you have to face. This is why some of you have the testimony, nothing in my life has been easy. 
you're frustrated because other people can use less effort. It seems like they get bigger results, but it seems like you got to fight for everything you have. Maybe it's because of the assignment and the call that's on your life. And I came to tell you, you can't be discouraged. You got to grow in courage. Knowing faithful is he that called you that will also do it. Look at somebody say, he'll do it. So Peter had to deal with some resistance. David had to deal with some resistance because they were called. But watch this. Um, the reason you're going to run through the resistance is because you've been changed. Look at somebody say, I've been changed. It's this is just for the believers. I read somewhere um, that giants just exist to keep unbelievers out. You'll catch that on the way home. I said giants just exist to keep unbelievers out. But watch this. We can see that there's evidence that David has changed. The Bible does not say this. The Bible doesn't say that David runs away from the troops. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you. But I'm a lover, not a fighter. I try to avoid conflict. It's not my natural instinct to run to or through troops. I try to outthink the troops and see how I can avoid the troops and see how I can maneuver through the troops without the troops even knowing I maneuver. That's the way I move. And so that's my nature, to run around the truth. This is some of y'all's nature, too, because you like to avoid as well. Yeah, I know you like to avoid because you don't address, you suppress. But watch this. God changes your nature. So the thing you would be running from, now you begin to run to. Because you're changed. Let me invite your attention to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 through 5. And I'm going to read it from the message translation. It reads something like this. It says, every God-born person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to his knees is our faith. The person who wins out over the world's ways is simply the one who believes Jesus is the son of God. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, even our faith. That's what the text says. Now, understand this, that when you've been born from above, you're born again. And he says, whatever is born from above or whatever is born from the father, now you have a DNA change. So overcoming is in my DNA. Notice I didn't say avoiding is in my DNA. Overcoming is in my DNA. In order to overcome something, you got to overcome something. That means something has to be in your way that God won't remove. And they need to see the victory that God gives in your life. Because sometimes when God won't remove it, he'll just give you the grace to overcome it. And this is why he can say that you're more than a conqueror. Because God knows he's not going to exempt you from every trial. He's not going to exempt you from every test. But when you know overcoming is in your DNA, that means no matter what you face, you cannot lose. I just need about two or three people who were tempted to run but you remember what was in your DNA and you remember that you're overcome. I need some people that have been blood bought that have been changed that old things have passed away and behold all things have been made new I want you just to open your mouth and shout I'm an overcomer they're not shouting like this the new year they shout like it's till 2023 I need you to shout I'm an overcomer Yeah, yeah, you got to understand this because sometimes you're going to face some obstacles that seem like they're overwhelming, that seem like they're going to take you out. It's going to seem like the temptation is too great, college students, but you got to say to yourself that I'm an overcomer. I know I gave in to lust last year, but I'm not giving in to lust this year because I'm an overcomer. You got to say that about your business. Yes, we went under last year, but we went under so we can go over. I'm an overcomer. If you know you got overcoming in your blood. 
I said there's overcoming in the blood because they kept Jesus down for three days but on the third day he got up because he had overcoming in his blood and if you have the same spirit in you it will quicken your motor bodies and you get up with Jesus look at somebody say I'm an overcomer wish we could have a little church on today the reason I'm here today is not because my life has been exempt from trials. It's because God has given me the grace to overcome. I've overcome statistics. Overcame the status quo. There's no goodness in my own. It's because I know overcoming is in my DNA. Some of y'all were sick. The doctor gave you up, but somehow you overcame. Some of you been through divorce, and somehow you overcame. Some of you went through abuse, but somehow you overcame. Some of your kids left you stranded, but somehow you overcame. Some of you lost your job, but you kept on eating because somehow you overcame. And this is what the world is looking at. They realize we all going to go through storms, that God's going to rain on the just and the unjust. They want to see how you're going to respond. Are you an overcomer? Yes, you have to raise that child all by yourself, but you're an overcomer. This is the truth of the matter is you got to know what's in your DNA. And this is what I came to do on the day. I came to give you a history report. I came to give you a genealogy of yourself so you can realize that you have the blood of an overcomer. Some of y'all have been through some stuff that should have kept you down, but you are an overcomer. I just need a few witnesses in the balcony if you know that you're an overcomer. This is why you can lift your hands. See, the truth of the matter is, you don't know what I had to overcome to get to church on this morning. You don't know what I had to face just to be here and lift my hands. You think my life has been great, but the truth of the matter is I overcame it. This is why I say hallelujah, because I'm overcoming my fears and leaning on my faith. If you know you're an overcomer for the fourth time, just give God some praise. I fell seven times, but I got back up because I'm an overcomer. What well, messed up you up? You can't be God's child and not be an overcomer. Some of us have overcome betrayal and still got love in our hearts because we are an over. Come on. Things I used to run from, now I run to. I used to run from my enemies, now I love my enemies because I'm an overcomer. Give me a few minutes, I'm gonna get you out in 1130. I just want you to know that you're an overcomer. Christ, who loved us and who gave his life for us. I need to establish that in the house that if you are a born again believer you are an overcomer it's in your DNA yes he reigns on the just and the unjust but I get to carry an umbrella because I'm an overcomer I'm an overcomer please be seated I'm changed Things I used to lose sleep about, I don't lose sleep about it anymore because I'm over. Come on. This is what David understood, that God's not going to always remove every obstacle. But it must be our conviction that if he put the obstacle in my way, I can overcome it. Because we are more than conquerors. And how would you know that if you never conquered anything? You're living beneath your privilege of everything you want to be given. You, you got to have a moment. Like one of the actresses in The Color Purple that says, all my life, I had to fight. But all your life, you've been winning. Yes. 
Because you're an overcomer. And if God put it in front of you, he knows you can handle it. Sometimes you're waiting for it to come down, but God's trying to wait for you to come up. Because you're an overcomer. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, even by faith. With all that temptation on the college campus, you, you got to know that you're an overcomer. If not, you'll get swept under. And I wish college was the only place there was temptation. So that you won't be overtaken, you got to become an overcomer. And you can get over it when you understand what's in your blood. This is what makes Christians different. I didn't say better, but different than others. Because they have overcoming in their blood. Everybody's going to die, but only Christians are going to get up. Because you got overcoming in your blood. Because we have been changed. What would happen if we had a church that stopped running from the problem and start running to the problem because you recognize you're an overcomer? Because you're only going to be able to run through troops when you won't run around them or run from them. And that's a renewal of mind. Because again, big devils don't guard small rewards. So there must be something on the other side that I have to get to. But in order to get to it, I got to get through this. So he ran through what was designed to block him. Let me ask you a question. What is God calling you to run through that was designed to block you? Some of you already made excuses. I can't get the job because of X, Y, Z. It was designed to block you, but who said you can't run through it? No one would ever love me, so I'll be single for the rest of my life. Why? Because maybe you found a roadblock that was designed to keep you out, but who said you can't run through it? I'm going to be broke because I make this much money on my job and my bills are this high and my check is this high. Uh, and that's some of your testimonies. But the truth of the matter is, who said you can't run through it? It was designed to be an obstacle, but you're an overcomer. You got to learn how to run through the resistance. You got to learn how to run Resistance. You got to feel the resistance and keep on moving. You know why I can run through the resistance? Because I realize my enemy has a weakness. I say, I realize my enemy has a weakness. Remember when David was slinging his slingshot? He didn't just aim anywhere. He aimed at the opening. On Goliath's helmet because he recognized his enemy had a weakness. And I know you think you're the only one that has a weakness, but I came and declare that your enemy has a weakness too. Some of y'all going to sleep on me, so let me talk about Red Rover, Red Rover for a few more moments. You don't understand David, but you understand Red Rover. The strategy of Red Rover is when they call you, you have to run through what they call a chain. But strategy is to try to find the weakest link. Because somewhere on that wall, there's a weakling. And if I can find the weakness, I can get through what was designed to restrict me. I came to preach to somebody. 
that the devil is the same way. You're not the only one with the weakness, but he has a weakness too. That's why he was mad when you were going through all that calamity and you shouted the name of Jesus because he knows the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The demons tremble at his name and he had to back off. But I came in to tell you that you can't give up because your enemy has a weakness and greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you got a reason to give God praise if you know that he's giving you power to conquer. So, so hear me. Hear me clearly. Your enemy has a weakness. Yeah, if you're going to play Red Rover, you got to be able to pick out the weakness. I don't have to break every link. I just need to break a certain link. Because my objective is to get to the other side. See, the enemy has a weakness. <laughs> That's why David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than me. Because the enemy can't follow you to the rock. The air is too thin the higher you go. Yeah. That's why when deers pant for water, the enemy can't follow you everywhere you go because sometimes you go in the deep end and he doesn't want to be drowned, so he won't follow you as the deer pant for water. That's why the best thing you can do is chase after God because it's hard for the enemy to stop you and block you when you're chasing after God. This year, out of all the things you're going to chase for, you need to make up your mind, I'm going to chase after God. Yeah. I'm going to chase after God and watch all these other things be added because God is faithful to do what he promised. I got to move. I'm praying that God will show you the weakness in your enemy. I'm praying that God will show you the weakness in your opposition. I'm praying that God will show you the weakness in the resistance. There is a weakness. And towers and giants do come down. So when they said Red Rover, Red Rover, come over. He didn't call you to fail. Peter, he didn't call you to sink. And the reason you won't sink, and the reason Peter didn't sink, third point, is because he was connected. If you're going to get through, you got to be called, you got to be changed, and you've got to be connected. I said you got to be called, you got to be changed, and you got to be connected. The reason Peter did not sink is because Jesus called him. He remained connected. I want to submit this to you, um, that the text says, for by thee, I have run through a truth. By thee, so he's not taking credit for himself. He says there was a higher power that was at work in this endeavor, that it was God who enforced me to be able to run through these troops, it was God that made the difference. He said, I saw a 1,000 fall on my side and 10,000 on my right hand, but it was God who kept me safe in the middle of it all. He says, it was because I was connected to God. That's the reason you're going to get through. The reason you're called, the reason the enemy has been picking on you is because of what you're connected to. That's how you play Red Rover. You have two different groups that are connected, and they get called based upon their connections. Now, you got to know what you're connected to. So he says, it's by thee that I'm able to run through troops. See, that's the difference. Sometimes we live Christianity like we pulled our own stuff up by our bootstraps when it was really nobody but God. This is why one of the greatest things I'm going to do this year is point people back to God. That's why the first person we're going to connect with this year is God. Because God has everything you need. He will be everything you need him to be if you just will make a connection. I am not preaching religion this year. I'm preaching relationship. It's not enough to be around him. You got to be in him. 
So that's the first stop. Because of what you're connected to. I don't know why I'm just going through memory lane. And I don't know if y'all read the same books I read growing up. Um, but I read a book that contained a story in it um, called a Billy Go Gruff. Y'all remember Billy Go Gruff? Yeah, I know they probably don't read that book any longer. But in the old days, they had a book called Billy Goat Gruff, one of my favorite books. I love that book. My teacher read it to me every week. Love that story. And so I, I looked it up last night to refresh my memory right. since it's been so many years since me and Billy Goat caught up. <laughs> and, and so I was reading the story on Billy Goat Gruff, and it was about three Billy Goats. That was the youngest brother, that was the middle brother, and that was the older brother. And they ate up all the grass on one side until the grass was bare. And then someone came up with the idea, let's go on to the other side. Why sit here till we die? And so the youngest brother is the first to leave to go find the green grass. And he has to cross a bridge to get to the green grass. But to his surprise, Sister Anne, I know you know this story. Uh, while he was crossing the bridge, he came in contact with the troll. That was his resistance. And the troll says, I'm going to eat you for dinner. And the goat thought to himself, he said, Mr. Troll, if you eat me, you'll be dissatisfied. I have a bigger brother that's coming behind me. And so the troll says, you can get through. So the middle brother came. The middle goat came. Yeah, the middle goat came. And he was trying to get to the other side to get some grass. And the troll says, I'm going to eat you. He said, oh, please don't eat me, Mr. Troll. I got a bigger brother that's coming behind me. And if you wait, I'm sure he'll satisfy you. So the troll let the middle brother over. And then the big bro came. And the troll tried to eat the big brother. And the big brother knocked the troll off the bridge. I came in to prophesy to somebody that the reason you're going to get to the other side is because you have a big brother. And your big brother's name is Jesus. If you believe it, I want you to give God some praise. And thank God for your big brother who will never leave you nor forsake you, who has never lost the game. If you know you got somebody that's backing you, and if God be for you, who can be against you? You got a reason to give God some praise. Watch your have five somebody say, God's backing you, God's backing you, God's backing you. You may feel by yourself, but you got a big brother. And his name is Jesus. And sooner or later, things are going to work in your favor. I believe I'm going to run on and see what the end's going to be. Because I have a big brother. If you believe it, let's act like we're in Dallas and give God some praise. That's why the enemy's going to let you over. You got a big brother. That's why the enemy's going to let you pass. His name is Jesus. Can we have an old moment? Sometimes I look back and wonder how I made it over. I know how I made it over. It was Jesus. Now can we just take the next 30 seconds only if you love them like I love them and give them some praise? Thank you, big brother. Thank you, big brother. Thank you, big brother. Thank you, big brother. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but thank you, big brother. The troll wanted me, but thank you, big brother. Thank you for having my back. Prophesy to somebody, say, I'm going to the other side. I'm going to the other side. I'm going to the other side.
because Jesus is with me. Come what will, come what may. I'm going to the other side because Jesus. That's the only way I made it over. That's my secret. You should have the job you have. There's no way you should have the wife you have. There's no way you should. But you had a big brother who intercedes on your behalf. They said, let him pass, let him pass, let him pass, let him pass. Look at somebody say, I'm about to run through. I'm about to run through. The devil thought I was about to quit. I'm not about to quit. I'm about to run through. The devil thought I was going to throw in the towel. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm about to run through. If you really are going to say, I'm about to praise my way through. Y'all missed that point. Y'all missed that moment. I said, if you really are going to say, I'm about to praise my way through. Praisers. The reason they running is because they running through troops. See, some of you let your mouth prophesy, and some of you let your feet prophesy. Some of you to grab your spouse's hand and say, we're going to get through this. Because we got a big brother named Jesus. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? When the enemies came to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they failed. Anybody had that testimony? Because you had a big brother named Jesus. I said the Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost. I said I said the Holy Ghost. I feel like we in the old-fashioned tent revival. We have a revival on Sunday morning. Aren't you glad that God had you back? Now, I got to do the altar call first. Because, because there's some people that life has presented you with a dead end. But I want you to know that Jesus is not just a way, but Jesus is the way. Some of you feel like you're in a dead end, but Jesus said, I am the door. If you have Jesus, you can get through because the door takes you from one room to another room. And I came in to prophesy that you about to change rooms when you receive Jesus. If you're here today and you know you need Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you need to rededicate your life to him. I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to meet me right here. And I want to offer you Jesus wherever you are. Come on. Come on. If you can't get out, just wave at me. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not going to ask you to move. Just pray. Wherever you are, I see it. I see it. Come on, wave at me. Sometimes altar calls see 
solemn, but they really should be a celebration. This is the best day of your life. Thank God for you, thank God for you. I believe there's about 20 more people need to move, but you can stay in your seat, just wave back at me. Wave back at me, I'm gonna pray for you right where y'all are, wave back at me. Come on, if you feel like you're stuck, God's about to break you out. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Can, can I finish the text you so they can know I study? Watch this. David said, your way is perfect. He said, your word is truth. It's a buckler. The reason you've been stuck is because you believe in the lies. God's about to take the restriction off your life when you embrace the truth. Today is your day to embrace the truth. Wherever you're here, they come, they come, they come. If you're online, just say, I need Jesus. Wherever you are. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, if you know you need Jesus, we good. Half of y'all stay in the audience, half of y'all coming. It's cool. It's cool. God will meet you wherever you are. Man, y'all ever seen an altar call like this before? Come on, let's throw a party. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We gotta move. We gotta move. I feel like there's some people in the balcony that need to bust the move. Yes, sir. I want to invite somebody from the balcony to come and join the party. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. They coming. They coming. They coming. They coming. You know how to throw a party. Welcome back. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, this is the last dance for today. If you receive Jesus, wave your hand. We're going to pray for you whether you're in your seat or you're here. We're not going to limit where God can save. But I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Let me just lead you in prayer. Say, Father God, I realize that I'm a sinner, that I've fallen short of your standard for my life. But I'm so glad you sent your son Jesus to have my back and to forgive me and to wash me of all my sins. And right now, Father, I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit that gives me the power. I just said it like you got some power that gives me the power to please you. Say from this day forward, my life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.